Here is how I would learn AWS if I could start over. I'm Suleiman, I've worked in tech for a decade and I run my own AI cloud security consultancy. I'm an AWS certified professional solutions architect and I've built more than 860 projects using AWS. Through my academy, I've successfully taught more than 400 students to become AWS cloud engineers. And in this video, I'm sharing the three-step blueprint that I would follow to learn AWS if I could start all over again. I'm also giving away loads of free resources that you probably didn't even know existed so you can get started for free today even if you have zero experience all you need is a laptop one or two hours per day and start with step zero that's right you are not ready for step number one yet and it's funny because when i was starting out i didn't even know that this stage even existed i jumped straight into playing around with aws services thinking the sooner that i build the better but i was so wrong because here is the Thing. A great cloud engineer doesn't just dive head first and learn random tools that they've never heard of. You have to build a strong foundation before you can build the house. You see, back in my old nine to five job as a cloud engineer, we were assigned a data migration project. Basically, we had to move a bunch of files from our on-prem servers into AWS. Pretty straightforward, right? But what if I told you that we almost ran into serious trouble because we skipped one crucial step. One of my teammates was so pumped about a brand new AWS tool for transferring data. He'd read an article about it, so he was so quick to set it up. Within days, we had a demo with files flowing straight into Amazon S3. It looked great, but then we noticed a few big red flags when we started to run some tests. Basically, this new service wasn't a one-size-fits-all, but we didn't realize that until after we started building. So we were just scrambling around for a better plan and a better solution. That's where the mindset shift comes in. And this is what you need to learn right now. Instead of jumping at the opportunity to learn the newest AWS feature, which we call shiny object syndrome, I took a step back and approached the problem with first principles thinking. I asked three simple questions. What do we really need this migration to achieve? What do we have to do to secure our data? And how can we verify every file is transferred correctly? And as soon as I mapped out these requirements, it became very clear the new AWS service didn't meet all of our needs. And that's the difference between a good and a great AWS cloud engineer. A good cloud engineer would jump on the latest AWS service, put together a quick demo that looks perfect on paper. A great cloud engineer, however, takes more time in the planning phase to ask the right questions. This method based on first principles engineering is exactly how students inside of my academy, like John, Mac, or Jay, are going from zero to hired by AWS in just a few months. A great first principles cloud engineer asks, how does the solution we're building scale if our data or user base increases tenfold? Or what happens in six weeks time when things break? Do we even have disaster recovery in place? And trust me, this will make learning AWS so much easier for you because you started to think critically from day one. And that's why if I could start over, the very first thing that I would do is make this mindset shift to think from first principles and question every single assumption. Because anyone can spin up a service for a quick fix, but a great cloud engineer focuses on the why and the how ensuring the long-term success of a project. Now that you have the right mindset, you are ready for step number one. Step number one is learning cloud and IT fundamentals. And here is what most people slip up. They dive straight into building AWS projects. If you want to avoid the frustration, you have to build a strong base in cloud and IT fundamentals. And I'll explain exactly what that means. So pay close attention because if you can't listen for five minutes, you're probably not going to make it. First up, start with a clear understanding of what what cloud providers like AWS actually do and why companies choose to move from on-prem to the cloud. I recommend checking out AWS Cloud Essentials Guide. It's a great introduction and AWS also has a video that breaks down what AWS do and how it fits into the broader technology ecosystem. At this stage, don't worry if you feel a little bit overwhelmed at first. There are a lot of new terms that you'll come across, but the key here is to absorb. This isn't the time to launch a big project. Focus on getting a strong foundational understanding. Next, you want to learn Linux. But why Linux? Well, because most, if not all, servers in the cloud are running on Linux distributions. Head over to linuxjourney.com. And no, they're not sponsoring this video. It's just a free interactive resource that walks you through Linux commands and file systems and all of that great stuff. Now, Free Code Camp also offers a Linux basics course on YouTube, and I recommend that too. The third piece
piece of the puzzle in this foundation phase is networking. Cloud computing is fundamentally about connecting resources over networks. So if you don't understand networking, you'll get lost very quickly. Free CodeCamp have a networking tutorial on YouTube, so you should start there. Next, I would spend a little bit of time understanding operating systems in general, what they do, how processes are managed, and how file systems are structured. Whether you use Mac OS, Windows, or Linux, this will help you debug problems and assess trade-offs in architectural decisions when you're actually working as an AWS cloud engineer. Again, just check on YouTube. There's plenty of resources explaining what operating systems are and how they work. Step two, let's build your skills in AWS. If I could start all over again, I wouldn't try to learn all 200 AWS services at once. It's a rookie mistake and it's just a waste of time. To keep things simple, I would focus on four core AWS services. Firstly, EC2, Elastic Compute Cloud. Secondly, S3, Simple Storage Service. Then I'll do VPC, Virtual Private Cloud, and IAM, Identity and Access Management. By the way, I actually have an in-depth AWS course for beginners on my channel. It's completely free and it cuts out all of the noise so you can focus on what actually matters. Now, here is a trap that you have to avoid that I see roughly 96% of beginners make. Everyone knows that they have to build projects. And if you're watching this, you you know it already, but 96% of beginners watch tutorial after tutorial building the same static website on S3 or spinning up a simple database. The problem is that everyone is doing that, so you will never stand out. Plus, you won't even remember half the steps that you followed once you are done. And that is because you are just following instructions and not solving real problems. So here is how to avoid tutorial hell. Firstly, don't just follow tutorials on YouTube. It's good for the first time to learn how to use AWS services. But after that, think about small real world problems that you can solve. Apply the first principles thinking mindset that you've just learned in this video. Maybe you want to track your workouts or calories, because if it's something that actually interests you, you are way more likely to retain the knowledge that you're trying to gain, right? So I always say build projects that solve your problems because you're more likely to finish that project. Now, if you need some guidance or where you can actually build these projects, AWS has a hidden gem called AWS Workshops, a site filled with free tutorials to build hands-on projects. Now, I also released a video on AWS cloud projects that will give you an unfair advantage. These are the same projects my students inside of my academy are leveraging to land six-figure roles in the cloud, so check that out too. Now, before we jump into step number three, there is one key thing that we haven't covered yet. If you really want to learn AWS and actually get hired, you'll need to have some coding and automation skills under your belt. And if you're thinking, I'm not a software engineer, do I really need to learn this? Stick with me here because it's going to make sense. When you're building projects for the very first time, you can definitely go through the AWS console and manually click through. That's fine for just learning how AWS works and what the services are and what parameters they have. But once you get comfortable, you want to switch to automated repeatable processes. And this is where having basic coding knowledge with Python will make all of the difference. And it's not only the most popular language to learn, but it's also the easiest because it pretty much reads like plain English. Now to learn Python, I will check out the bro code. Again, this isn't sponsored, but I know his free Python course will genuinely help you. And being comfortable with Python allows you to handle cloud tasks effortlessly and integrate with two specific tools. The first is Terraform. Now in the real world, companies want to version control their infrastructure. It just means being able to replicate environments with a single command. So instead of clicking the buttons in the console, you will write the code that says, give me two EC2 instances, one load balancer, a VPC with this IP range, and Terraform builds it all automatically. So you don't have to click around the console. And to get started with Terraform, go to Harshu Corp Tutorials. There's a dedicated section on Terraform with AWS and it's completely free. The second thing is CICD pipelines. Now this is all about automating the process of testing, building, and deploying your applications to the cloud. For example, when you push a change to your Terraform code, your CICD pipeline can automatically test it and apply those infrastructure changes without you having to manually do it yourself. To get started for free, check out the GitHub docs for GitHub Actions. And if you're more of a video learner, you'll find plenty of free YouTube courses walking you through building a simple CI/CD pipeline with GitHub Actions. And if you're worried that you're not technical enough and there's a lot to take in, then don't worry because the secret to longevity in tech is all about having the right system that propels you. And step number three is about long-term growth. And if there's one piece of advice that I would give myself 
yourself when starting over, it's this. It's never stop learning. The cloud evolves daily. New services, new best practices, new security threats. While it's very exciting, and let's face it, it can also be overwhelming, especially when your day job or your personal life gets in the way. That's why you need to build a system that sets you up for success so you can just steal my own personal framework. Number one, schedule. Dedicate at least one to two hours every day to learn something new on AWS. Number two is mentors and communities. You want to join communities and go to cloud meetups. Having mentors to bounce ideas off will accelerate your growth, keep you motivated, but also help you land a job because you're building a network. And number three, project-based learning. Instead of random tutorials, structure your learning around building real life projects. That way you'll stay focused and have actual results to put on your portfolio. With this system, you'll actually retain what you learn and you you won't feel like you're going too deep into a topic that you don't really understand yet. Now, that said, it's not enough to just learn and build projects in your own corner of the internet. You have to showcase what you are doing. Why? Well, because 90% of recruiters will check your LinkedIn before they even ever talk to you. I've been in this game for a decade and being visible online has consistently led to new opportunities and new job offers, even though I'm not looking for them. New clients and new partnerships. And it's not about who you know, it's about who knows you. And if you have the skills, but nobody knows about them, it's as if you don't even exist. So you have to put yourself out there. And when I say this, most people think that you need a fancy setup with expensive cameras. No, that's not what I mean. You don't even have to post videos. Just fix your LinkedIn profile because LinkedIn is your new resume in 2025. And make sure your picture looks professional and post at least three to four times a week. Share your progress and talk about what you're building what you're learning, the challenges that you're having. That way, when you apply for jobs and the hiring manager searches for you on LinkedIn, they're way more likely to give you a chance. And if you're wondering, well, what about certifications? You haven't covered them yet, Soleiman. Well, look, they are important because they give you credibility and a lot of companies do look for them when they're hiring, but they act as a barrier for more than 93% of beginners. And here is why. People think they need certifications before they can even learn AWS and build projects. So they never get started building anything. And funnily enough, they don't get certified either. And that's why if I could start over again, I would use certifications as more of a supplement to learning AWS and not a core focus. And I've just released my AWS certification roadmap for 2025. So click right here to know exactly which certifications that I recommend.